Hey guys, Gary on your screen here. So if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm reviewing all Superman solo films. Let's continue on to Superman Returns. Before Superman Returns came out, I was hoping for years that a modern version of a Superman film would come out sometime in my lifetime. I'd read on the internet all the time with productions on Superman being developed, then suddenly falling flat in development hell. This happened with Brett Ratner, McGee, and most famously with Tim Burton's take and Nicolas fucking Cage as Superman. But they all fell through the cracks of Hollywood, probably for the best. I remember way back when I had a conversation years before this film came out with my uncle driving back from a football game talking about what director would be best suited for a new Superman film. He suggested Ron Howard, which I agreed was a great choice concerning his filmography and the fact that I loved A Beautiful Mind. But having two X-Men films blow my mind at that age, I suggested Brian Singer. And I thought Kevin Spacey would be a great Lex Luthor. If you don't believe I made those suggestions, ask my uncle, ask my cousin. I talk their ears off all the time about potential Superman films. And so about a year later, guess what we got? We got the X-Men director and we got the guy who played Kaiser Soze in The Usual Suspects, also directed by Brian Singer, the X-Men director. A few days after Superman Returns opened, I saw it in the movie theaters. This was my jam. I was so excited. I would have seen it the first day, but I was in buck fuck nowhere roofing. I sat in an unpacked theater, maybe 20 people in there max, after it's been released for about four days. I heard quite a bit about this film before seeing it, but I didn't care, and I made sure not to read any reviews beforehand. Wink. When the film ended, I was in awe of disappointment. I tried so hard that day to find a, a good reason to like it, but I just kept picking it apart. To start off, it's a soft sequel to the original two Superman films. If you didn't know that already, though there is no mention of three Kryptonians, it's a sequel in that Superman bent Lois in Superman 2 and supposedly got her pregos from it. So after astronomers discovered remnants of Krypton, kal takes off for five years to discover it was a waste of a trip. There are scenes in the trailer and deleted scenes of this sequence, but it never made the cut of the film. Though it's too bad, the footage you see in the deleted scenes is actually quite beautifully shot. The film starts off with Superman returning to Earth. We get a glimpse of what I think is supposed to be a black Superman suit, but it's gray. Clark returns to Metropolis to get his old job back at the Daily Planet. We are then reintroduced to Lois Lane, her husband, and Jason. Everyone acts a bit estranged with one another at first meeting. Clark and Lois act as if they never really were close friends. He's not so much bumbly and clumsy in this movie, but awkward throughout the entire film when he interacts with just about anybody. I think the characters are more mere cutouts from the original film. And although I get how much this film is supposed to respect its past films, actors should be given more freedom in this film to expand their character's depth. They seem dull, again, and awkward throughout the, throughout the film. There is some value in entertainment with Returns. There is a rescue sequence involving a space shuttle that honestly was the most enjoyable action sequence in the film. It's the only real scene that has any kind of intensity to it, given that it was drawn out though, the entire movie is like that, like a slow burn. Then there is Lex Luthor, played by Kevin Spacey, who's a step up on the sadistic side from Gene Hackman. Though still obsessed with land, it seems Spacey is the only one, though, in the entire cast that can really be let loose. He shows more intensity and depth than any other character in the movie. He takes some henchmen and women to the Arctic to gather crystals from the Fortress of Solitude and devise a plan to create more land out of kryptonite and those crystals again. It's a lame plan, but using the kryptonite is supposed to keep Superman away. 
We also get a hint whose father Jason's really is. And that leaves for more interesting drama, but it's never really explored. One thing that bothered me about Superman Returns, it really felt like it didn't flow that well. When conversations were had by anybody in the film, you didn't feel as if it could just keep going. Once a person stops talking, it felt awkward and stale. Like in between each scene or conversations, it didn't finish with a certain flow or it was dead air, it, no depth. Superman didn't have much to say either, and neither did Clark. It was very much like, don't speak until you're spoken to kind of dialogue. And that's kind of shitty, given that their past relationship and the fact that the director, Brian Singer, said that this was a romance, a date film. I felt it needed a bit more down-to-earth conversations between Lois and Clark, and they should have gone to that coffee date. Or maybe there should have been some tension between Clark and Richard, Lois's husband. Though all is lackluster, it does have some art house feel to it. Quite a bit of CGI was used for Superman to soar in the skies. And those scenes are so beautifully shot. Especially one scene where Superman is re regenerating his powers from the sun. Before this film, it's always been said or implied that he gets his powers from the sun but it was never physically shown. The ocean scenes and the new Krypton scenes also were utilized pretty well visually, as well as the music with those scenes, it does become emotionally driven. I love what the composer added to the original score. It was somber, it helped, it helped you feel for Superman as much as you could, with it still lacking any depth in personal growth. And then we have the last hour, when you find yourself more engaged and you forget about the flaws at the moment on the fight scene on the new Krypton where Superman finds himself temporarily without powers, he's getting his ass handed to him. He's punched. He's kicked. He's stabbed. You find yourself in near tears in that scene. Superman's head is grabbed and pulled as he's headed to a cliff and he yells, I'm still Superman. It's a gut-wrenching moment. The last moments of the film is where you find it nearly impossible to see a franchise go any further with super, with super villains. Because if Superman can lift an entire continent in space, what villain is going to be a match for him? It is an awesome scene though. Supes is going off a of pure will here. After that scene, he's in the hospital, stripped down out of his suit. I just feel this to be a bit unrealistic, even in this universe. Because he's got to have more enemies, especially with the government officials or politicians who would gladly take the risk of taking a suit. Now comes the creepy looking scene before the end. It was a touching scene, but it, but it was played out wrong. Where Superman visits Jason and rephrases his father's words spoken to him as he was a child. It could have been filmed a much less creepier way. Maybe the phrase should have been said or whispered outside the bedroom window instead. With how disappointed I was my first viewing of Superman Returns, I did watch it five more times in the theater and bought the DVD. And because it was the only modern Superman film at the time, I watched it till I could appreciate it and it worked. I am glad they made this style of Superman movie though. Still needed work with more character development at the very least. But now we know what kind of movie this could be, and so there's no reason to make the same mistake again. I also didn't care much for the suit. The symbol was too low to the center of his chest. There's too much blue space between the neck and the Superman crest. And the belt with the yellow Superman symbol on it was so unnecessary. He looks like a giant stiff action figure in some scenes, especially the rescue scene in the baseball diamond. This film really tried, and so I'm going to recommend Superman Returns. It's definitely a big step up from the previous four films starring Reeves, but it's not really universally relevant, much like the Reeves films. Thanks for watching, and please share. If you agree or disagree, put a comment down below me.